Good morning. This is Robert Cosabstein bringing you this morning's market update. Starting in the US, markets rallied upwards at the close of last week. The US 500 added 35 points to close on 1,906.43. The US Tech 100 gained 110 points to close on 4,256.13. And the Wall Street added 204 points to close on 16,091. Apple, which has declined 24 spot 6% from its peak of $134, helped push indices up on Friday, gaining $3.91. This coming Tuesday, Apple is set to report its earnings and is poised to beat its own record for the most profitable quarter in U.S. corporate history. Although net income is expected to hit $18.2 billion, that is only 1% above the record it set a year ago. Income uh, for the final three months of 2014, the tech company's FIC profits surged 37%, and chief executive Tim Cook held iPhone sales growth that was hard to comprehend. Now, with the smartphone market slowing and demand in China in doubt, Wall Street is more fixated on another potential milestone for the world's largest company by market capitalization, the iPhone's first ever down year. While most analysts predict iPhone sales will rise slightly compared with its fiscal first quarter a year ago when it shipped 74.5 million units, investors are more concerned about what happens to Apple's most lucrative product through the rest of the fiscal 2016. Analysts are particularly obsessed with the outlook for iPhone sales because the device accounted for two-thirds of Apple's sales in 2015. This is not the first time the Silicon Valley company has seen such concern grown on Wall Street, in early 2013, in the wake of a 78% leap in iPhone sales for the 2012 holiday quarter, Apple's market capitalization fell below that of ExxonMobil, which it had overtaken as the world's most valuable company a year earlier. Then, as now, leaks of cuts in Apple's supply chain compounded doubts that such huge growth in iPhone sales could never be repeated. Mr. Kirk warned analysts to question the accuracy of such rumors. Apple's growth rate did indeed slow during 2013, but the launch in September 2014 of the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, which boasted much larger displays, reignited demand. Now, Apple appears to be hoping that it can do the same thing by cutting screen size again. Persistent rumors suggest that a new iPhone 5 SE with the same size display as the 2012's iPhone 5, but new technology, including support for Apple Pay and live photos, will be released in the spring. In the commodities sector, Friday saw a decline on gold after a three-day gain. The precious metal fell $2.80 to $1,098, while Brent crude had a large rally in the market, gaining $2.47 to close at $32.17 a barrel. Since hitting a 12-year low on Wednesday, Brent crude jumped by more than 16% as hedge funds started to bank profits on positions designed to gain from the crash in prices and tentatively rotate into bullish strategies. There's also been a sharp rise in the number of $40 call options for December 2016. In Europe, the Germany 30 saw a rally of 225 points to close on 9,826.8 on Friday, while the UK 100 climbed 144 points to close on 5,932.3. Further discussions are taking place in the UK over the proposed Brexit this year, with the warning by executives at some of the world's biggest drug makers stating a British exit from the EU would isolate the country's scientists and reduce its influence in medicine, global pharmaceuticals. This came from the executives followed, following a plea by the UK Prime Minister for business to enter the debate, which comes as the pro-Europe campaign steps up its rhetoric over the potential risks of a Brexit. Countering this, Eurosceptics point at to the success of Switzerland's pharmaceutical industry, the biggest in Europe by market capitalization, as evidence that life outside the EU is not incompatible with a thriving life science sector. Pharma executives say that the level of disruption following a Brexit would depend on the whether the UK remained part of European Medicines Agency, which approves medicines for all EU countries. Non-EU members, Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein, fall beneath the EMA's umbrella as part of the European Economic Area, but Switzerland, which is not part of the EEA, has its own separate drug approval process. In today's corporate news, an independent report on Saturday called for BT to spin off its broadband network. Sky is to invest $10 million in US marketing analytics from DataXU. Petra Diamonds 
revealed in its trading update, production was up 2% ahead of expectations, but revenue fell 28%. And private equity firm Electra announced it is to review its investment strategy after activist Edward Brampson was elected to the board last year. Today's economic data and focus at 9am in Germany, business climate index was released. In Italy, retail sales and industrial data was released. At 11 o'clock in the UK, CBI industrial trend survey is released. And at 3.30 in the US, Dallas federal manufacturing index is released. That's all for this morning's market update. Thank you and goodbye.